Hey everyone, Johnny here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how to find any term belonging to a geometric progression or as some say a geometric sequence, right? We'll just say a GP. So how do you find any term if you have a GP? Well, let's first of all consider a pattern that produces a geometric progression. Okay, so let's say I have the numbers 5 followed by 10 followed by 20, followed by 40, and so on. Now, what kind of pattern do we have here? How do we know it's a GP? Okay, so the first thing we'll do before we go into how to find any term in a GP is to quickly remind ourselves of how to know whether it is in fact a GP. So we know we've got this kind of pattern. We can probably tell intuitively there is some pattern, there is some consistency in terms of how we're going from one term to another in this chain of numbers, right? 5 to 10 to 20 to 40. What's going on? Well, we can see that what is happening to get from 5 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 40 is we're multiplying by 2. We are multiplying by 2. But the way to actually prove that in a formal way, right? In a formal way is to actually divide the third term, and the third term here, by the way, is the 20, because this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, the fourth, and so on. You divide the third term by the second term, and you check to see if the second term divided by the first term gives the same ratio. Okay, they call it a ratio. It's basically the number by which each number in the series is multiplied to get to the next number. We have to make sure that that number is the same for all of them. So, what is 20 over 10? It is 2. And does that equal 10 over 5? Well, if you're good at quick maths here, 20 over 10 is 2 over 1. And 10 over 5 is 2 over 1, which of course can just be shortened to 2. And those sides are the same. The left side is the same as the right side. So, we give it the tick. And we say, yes, we have a GP with a ratio of 2. The ratio is the number by which the 5 will be multiplied, the 10 will be multiplied, and so on to get to the next number. So, make that clear up here. We are times in each number by 2 to get to the next number. So, therefore, we have a geometric progression. That's always step 1. We could call it step zero if you want. If you want to find any term in a GP, step zero is to know that you actually have a GP. Okay, so never forget that antecedent step. Okay, the step that comes before. Don't just assume you have a GP. Prove that you have a GP. We also know the common ratio is two. We know that the first term is five and that's always important. Okay, and that will be important. The first term is called A. And that is 5. Okay, great. Now that we have the proof that we have a GP, the question is, how could I predict? How could I safely estimate? Well, it's not even an estimation. How could I know what a term will be in this geometric progression further down the line? So, what is the 10th term of this pattern going to be? If I was just to ask you that, would you know straight away? Perhaps not. What would you think to do? Well, I'll keep doubling the numbers because 2 is the ratio. I'll keep doubling them until we get to the 10th term. But what if I said the 1,000th term? Do you really want to write out a 1,000 terms to tell me what the 1,000th term is going to be in this particular GP? No, you want to have a shortcut. And this formula up here is the shortcut. But let me explain the logic behind the formula, how to get to the formula, and then applying the formula will be quite easy. So, we've done the test. That was kind of the first stage of this. The second stage here is just to show the logic of the formula. So, let's have a closer look at the terms. Let's say I have the first term here, which is 5. Right? We had 5, which again is called A. Right? 5 is A because it is the first term. So, the first term, T1, is always A. Okay? Now, how do I go from 5 to 10? Well, we multiply, we multiply by the common ratio, right? So, we multiply 
by the common ratio, which is two. Okay, but I'm trying to use the symbols now so we can come up with a general formula. Okay, so to get to T2, remember this is T2 here. So to get to T2, we need to multiply the first term. I'm not going to write five. I'm, I want to use the general terms here. We multiply the first term by the ratio. Hopefully you can see that because five times two gives me 10. So to get to the second term, it's A times R. What about to get to the third term, which we can see here is 20. The third term is 20. How do I get from there? Well, I multiply the second term by R. I multiply the second term by R. So in other words, T3 is going to equal, and this is the important part. Let's, let's put this in green here. It's actually going to be T2 times R because it's going to be 10 times 2 to give 20. Okay, so I'll put this R in black here, right? So T2 times R will give you T3. So do you see the pattern emerging? To get to the second term, you times the first term by R. To get to the third term, you times the second term by R and so on. So remember here that T2 is the same as A times R. T2 is A times R as we already showed that. So now I'm going to substitute A times R here where the T2 is because they're the same thing. So T3 equals A times R. Remember from above, A times R. And then times R again because that's this extended part. So just make sure you're clear here that T2 is the same as these two terms, A times R, as you can see there. Now, if I simplify this, A times R times R is just A R squared. Okay, so we have T3 equals A R squared. And T2 equals A times R, which is A R. So try and look at the pattern here. To get the second term, you multiplied the first term A by R, just R. And there's an invisible one there, by the way. We don't have to write the one, but there is a one. Here, to get the third term, you times R by, or you rather, you times R by itself twice, which is R to the power of 2. So it's A times R2 to give you the third term. Can you see the pattern? When you want to find the third term, you get the first term and you have to do R to the power of 2. But when you did the second term, you did the first term times R to the power of 1. So notice here, when it's the second term, R has a power that is 1 less than it, 2 to 1. When it's the third term, R has a power that is 1 less than it. It was 3, here it is 2. Therefore, okay, therefore we can make a general formula here. T to N, the nth term, T to any number you want, any number. I want the tenth term, I want the thousandth term. Is going to be, it's going to be A. We can see that A is the case in all of it. And then we always put the R there. But the R, importantly, is to the power of N minus 1. So hopefully the N minus 1 makes sense. Because if I was finding the fourth term, if you could continue the pattern here, if I was finding T4, it would equal A, R to the power of 3. It wouldn't be A to R to the power of 4. It would be A, R to the power of 3. Because when I was finding T3, it was A, R to the power of 2. So you see here, it follows a pattern where the power is one less than the number of the term you're trying to find. So if you're trying to find T10, it's A, R to the 9. And that is how you get this formula. Now you can memorize this formula. It's just good to understand where that formula comes from. It comes from this pattern because then we can put it into this general formula here. And now we could find any term we want. Let's do T. Let's do an example. Let's do T10. So I want the 10th term. Instead of writing out six more terms to give me the 10th term in this pattern, I can use the shortcut here. T10 is going to equal A, R, N minus 1. Subbing that in, that gives me 5. Remember, 5 was our first term. 5 times R, which is 2 to the power of 10 minus 1, which is 9. So it's going to equal 5 times 
2 to the power of 9. And if you put that in your calculator, that should come out as 5 times 512, which is going to equal 2,560. Okay, so see there, I know that the 10th term in this pattern without having to write six more terms is going to be 2560 using this formula and you can clearly see where the formula comes from by assessing those first few terms. I hope that helps you all. If you've got any questions, do put them below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please do me a favor and like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video.